Hey guys, what's going on? This is Shanahan, and I'm with APEC on my track Broken Souls, which is out now on Enhanced. Uh, we just wanted to go through both of our sessions as far as the initial idea starting over here on my end in Logic, and then finishing it up over with Josh in Ableton um, after I worked on some some startup ideas with the vocalist, I then handed over to APEC to really kick uh, the layering into gear, mixing and adding um, some really important elements that really brought the track to life uh, to the finished product that you guys are hearing now. So we're going to try to go through as much as possible to just give you an idea um, <clears throat> layer by layer and stem by stem to, uh, again, to just give you an idea of what we worked with. Um, and uh, it, I got to say, it's probably my favorite project I've ever worked on. I, I think Josh could agree also that it was more of a, uh, it was just an overall smooth uh, collaboration between both of us because we really complemented each other um, with their strengths and weaknesses to really just fill the gaps from two artists working together. It really just came together smooth um, overall. So I'm really happy with this project and probably one of my favorite records I've ever worked on. Um, so let's just dig into each stem down here. Uh, in my session, you'll hear everything is extremely bare because, uh, you know, it's, it's the initial idea. It's a sketch of what I really wanted to go for as far as the melody and the chords, uh, working off of the vocal, you know, the vocal was so perfect, uh, from Andrew Jackson that it gave me and Josh so much freedom to, uh, write around and just be creative as possible. So uh, the main melody that you hear, which I think is the really uh, the really uh, big hook in the track, is the the vocal edits that I did initially uh, as a startup idea in Contact. You know, I was just sampling the vocal bits and just playing them out on the keyboard and trying to find something that would fit. Uh, and so traditionally, I would just do that in a sampler, but for for this track, I actually went in the arrangement and just kind of split up um, piece by piece in the vocal, uh, you know, just cut from the main vocal. And then I just pitched uh, certain parts of the vocal to try to create, you know, obviously hitting different different notes and just try to create that melody that kind of worked. And that's kind of where that whole melody came from. And then me and Josh went in and, you know, made that into MIDI and then layered it. Um, outside of what I have here, Josh went in way more into depth. Uh, with layering, which you'll see in a moment. Um, but let me just play it out so you can hear the initial idea and how bare it is compared to where we are now with the finished product. happens um let me play it again let's see so you guys can hear uh you know that's our main drop you can hear how different it is from our finished version like i said josh went into a pretty extensive amount of uh layering and just mixing the record to really sound full to where it is now um and once i handed stems over to josh we just kept going back and forth with uh stemming uh, certain ideas out on top of what he did so it really worked perfect as far as how the record kind of finished itself uh, from this initial idea so again one of the best collaborations I've ever worked on and just very smooth so um, again the the main melody from the um, the vocal I was telling about the edits I'll just play those out so you can hear them because we actually did end up switching this a little bit once uh, Josh got this melody he went in and actually on the fourth uh, here on that fourth measure, he kind of made it pitch up a little bit, which you can hear in our final version. It just changes the melody just a little bit more um, because I had it at a two-bar loop idea, and Josh created it to just create a little bit more unique flair to the to the vocal melody. You can hear all that clicking that's in there. Um, I edited that out before I sent over the stems to Josh. Again, this is the really early project that I wanted to show you guys just how the whole idea started because, you know, as a producer and artist, I really think it's cool to see the beginning stages of a track and then compare it to 
the end uh it just shows how much work goes into the track and we're really happy uh with how much work went in the track but really how it came out in the end it was all worth it so um, as I said, you can hear the, the ad-libs there. That's really where the whole melody in my head came together. Uh, just playing on keyboard and converting it into that and then just pitch shifting everything over here, you can see. Um, and then just running that through um, a little bit of ducking, which Josh actually took care of later on in Ableton to uh, mesh that with the drop and, and everything else he put in. So I won't get too much into that because we did do a lot later on in Ableton when Josh got the stems. Um, and then I just did a couple other things as far as vocal editing, pitching, here you can say to the drop that we use later on. Um, and then I'll just play out some of my drop chords for you guys because this is where the idea kind of took off. Again, as I said earlier, this is very bare, but this is what gave uh, me and Josh a little bit more of a vision to go forward uh, with, with Josh's kind of layering and creating a much, much fuller and bigger product. So this is where the initial idea started. I'm definitely a big believer in serum. Um, hopefully everybody's using it, but it's just got so much more character and uh, just kind of a badass sound compared to everything else that's out there. I'm a big user in Silent also, but if you want a little bit more of a character and a little more crunch and badass sound to your, to your layers, go with serum. So nothing crazy as far as processing. Again, um, once Josh got the stems, he went into doing his own layering, which you'll see in a little bit. But um, again, I just want to show you guys the initial idea here. I always like putting Novel Tech on uh, to give a little bit more character and crunch to the sound. It's very, very subtle. You can hear how the Camel Crusher brings out that, that 10 to 15K range to give a little more presence. And the bass, um, just showing a little bit in the breaks, I had a bass, uh, an acoustic guitar I played out, but this bass guitar is really cool that I put through the guitar amp. That was a, a, kind of a nice layer in the drop. <laughs> And then a, a nice saw with noise that I always use from vandalism. Um, and you know, it's always, I always go for that fatter saw with noise on the drops. And then a little bit more of a talk layer there with it rolled off. Um, just put it in the mid side mode to get rid of all the stereo image in this lower. Uh, half of the layer you don't need any of that especially in the base layers I really just want it more in a mono setting so that's what we did there at the mid and side option on so yeah the base all together uh, again this isn't the final product of the base Josh went in and did a little bit of tweaking on this but you can hear the entire layer So it came together really nice. I liked that guitar edge the bass had, and I know uh, Apex liked that too because it had a good amount of drive, so it kind of gave him an idea of where to go uh, and kind of take it to a much fuller stage, which is exactly what he did. And just the top line I took from, uh, once I created the melody here from the, the ad-libs, I kind of just went in and created MIDI uh, for me and Josh to just kind of go forward with the layering uh, and just a further complete idea. So that's what that is here with the strings. I do run Maserati on a lot of my leads, uh, lead buses if I need to. Uh, don't just put it on for, for you know any reason, you know, because sometimes you can completely squash a sound just like any compressor, for example. But just be careful with when you're using it because you do want to 
uh, kind of use it to give a character and grit to the mix and to the to the layer. You don't really want to overdo it. So uh, I highly recommend all the Maserati plugins for vocals, for bass. Uh, you really can use them on anything. So check that out if you guys haven't. But I use that on a lot of my um, you know my leads and top layers just to give them a little more crunch and presence in the mix. Uh, so that's it for uh, you know those for the drop idea here before I sent it over to Josh. Uh, you can see other, I'll play other vocal parts too. Yeah, so as I said earlier, we went up with the vocal there. That was kind of a cool change that Josh came up with that I really love to give that little bit of variation to the vocal melody um, in the overall top line actually, uh, which turned out amazing. Uh, then for the break, the last thing I want to show you before I kick it over to Josh is I really just went in and did a couple guitar stems that I wanted to send over to Apex to really just have fun with and kind of incorporate into the break. Um, so you can hear these uh, guitars that I played in here and then a fret bass, more of a muted bass that I did in contact. The acoustic guitar, I love running through the 7-6 the seven, uh, seven, Legacy. It just gives a little bit more warmth. Uh, even though it's a limiter, it just seems like it gives more character and warmth uh, to guitars. It's kind of just a preference that I've been using for a while. Uh, and then I did uh, this fret bass, muted bass, like I said, in contact. Uh, more of just a closed bass fret sound. As far as the vocal, um, when Andrew gave us the vocal, I was I was blown away as far as uh, everything, as far as the lyrics, uh, the quality, uh, you know, the production as whole. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit of a headache getting a vocal, and then you get to edit it for hours or days or weeks. Uh, luckily, in this case, Andrew gave us a product that was absolutely amazing. So. Uh, as far as the processing, what I did on the vocal, I just usually use a little bit of JJP to bring it out a little more as far as the body of the vocal. Um, I actually did a separate vocal mix um, in a whole different session that took a, a really long amount of time because, not because of Andrew's production, it's because me and Josh were so particular about how we wanted the vocal to fit. Uh, that we went into the dry stems and really went piece by piece with layering to really make the vocal sit in the mix, which is the finished product you hear now, uh, again, that we're super happy with. So again, I just used JJP, a little bit of the uh, seven six on the end for the limiter, uh, again, just to give a little bit more taming and a little bit more warmth. I want to show you guys the piano I use too. Um, maybe you can use it, check it out in one of your productions if you have this. It's uh, called Signal from Output. Uh, probably the one of the most badass uh, since. It's new to the market. You know, I don't, I don't even think it's over a year old now. Uh, but I bought all of Output's uh, plugins because they're absolutely mind blowing as far as creativity and they're unique. And you really can't create these sounds in any any other synth. So that's why I use them. But as far as this piano, you can see down here the felt piano and the Atmos. You, you'll hear in the right uh, a little bit of reverb coming out or a little bit of character with that Atmos in the, in the side of the piano that makes it a unique piano sound. It's really just... To me, that feels like a real piano as compared to like a Yamaha or a grand piano that you just put in from your sampler. Um, this just feels a little bit more alive to me. Um, so check that out. If you guys don't have, uh, you know, signal from output, go go grab a copy. It's really nice. Um, other than that, really, I just have, you know, effects that worked out for this sketch before I sent it over to Josh. And he kind of went in uh, in depth with writing it. Uh, further writing the idea further and then kind of sent it back to me and then we did a few more stems that I sent to him and then I did um, just a final mix down on the vocal in a separate session and you know that's where we are now so 
Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the initial idea, but I'm going to kick it over to Josh to kind of go in depth with, uh, how the track just went forward to the finished product we're at now. So check it out and hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hey, what's up guys? It's APEC and I'm going to walk you guys through how we did the layering, mixing and mastering on Broken Souls. Let's get in. Starting off, we'll go through some of the leads that we layered on top so, of the vocal lead. So we started with this right here. This is the vocal. And then on top of that, we threw in some lead layers, I think about seven. So here's a few of them. Yeah, so each one of those had a different texture that I wanted to really give to the sound. So the vocal is the main one on top that you're going to be hearing mostly. And then the first one is the main saw layer, which kind of gives it its drive and its grit. And then the second one is a detuned layer that kind of just like fills up the, the sides and the stereo a bit. And then the next two, um, one, this one right here, has kind of a, a, a weird glide to it. And I thought it just like gave it a little bit more of an interesting sound to make it different and unique. And then the last one is percussion sound, which kind of gives it its attack. So it kind of hits really hard every time you hear it. And as for the chords, I think there's one, two, three, four, six different sounds. So these are a few of them. Yeah, so each one just has a different sound, takes up different areas of the spectrum. And also, I think it's really important with different layers that you're using to put them in different areas in the stereo field. So if one sound is right down the middle of mono, I'll take one sound and spread it either one halfway and then spread one the complete spread stereo width, and then maybe pan one to the left, pan one to the right. And then also another thing that I do that I think is really helpful with uh, stereo width is stereo delay. And I think I did on this one, yeah. So if you look at this simple delay right now, there's a bunch of different ways to do it depending on what program you're in. But for Ableton, I just use a simple delay plugin that is um, stock in Ableton. You can just find it right here under audio effects. So what I do is I switch it. It will come stock like this in sync and you can choose what percentage you want, but I'll switch it to time and then what you'll do is you'll set either the left or the right channel, one put all the way down, and then the other one, I usually stick anywhere between 10 and 35 milliseconds, and then I'll set the feedback to 23% and the dry width to 100. And what it's doing is it's separating your left and right channels, and it's doing an offset time. So your left channel is gonna be happening anywhere from 10 to 35 milliseconds separate, to the right channel so it's happening at different times and it's so little where you can't really tell the difference but it kind of just it kind of makes it sound like the sound is surrounding you and i think it's a really effective tool to really give your sounds more depth and more character and i'll usually add it to a couple different sounds i choose to do it mainly on percussive sounds like pianos and plugs and things like that so i really think that's what gave this track a lot of body and a lot of power um, and then there's a bunch of different bass layers, but mainly it's the sub bass, which you can't even hear through the camera, and then a mid bass. And I think it's really important to EQ each of your basses properly, so make sure that the sub only takes up the sub frequencies, and you cut the sub frequencies out of the mid bass so that they're not conflicting with each other. And that's pretty much all of the different layers that went into that. And then for the master chain, there's a lot of different plugins on it and it looks overwhelming, but in reality, they're all doing very minimal things. So the first one, this one, you can do this with so many different plugins, but what it's doing is I have a mono maker on it 
so that it's making everything under 260 hertz mono because everything in your sub frequencies you don't want it spread you just want it right down the middle and that's how it's really going to hit hard and then also a little trick i learned a long time ago is i'll take the stereo width and just give it just a tiny tiny boost just to give the entire track everything above 260 hertz just a tiny little bit of width just to kind of boost it all out a little bit just in case not everything is mono and then right after that it's a little bit of an eq and i did some mid-side processing on it so just giving it a little bit of a boost around 250 300 hertz in the mid just to give a little bit more bass and a little bit more mid power and then on the stereo on the side cut out all the low frequencies because we we're talking about putting all of the sub frequencies mono so we want to make sure to cut out all the sub frequencies in the stereo field and then just giving it a little boost in the high frequencies just to make the sides a little bit more bright and then we just threw on a couple little eqs cutting out everything on on the low side i think that it's really important to cut everything under 20 hertz out on your final master you can't really hear it because human hearing only allows you to hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz but just because you can't hear it doesn't mean that it's not there so if you're ever in a situation on a really big sound system like if you're playing edc or something you're gonna actually hear it and you're gonna hear this crazy rumbling that you're not really sure where it's coming from but it's just gonna make the track not sound nearly as good or as clean or as powerful as you want it to be and then also i cut out everything above eighteen thousand at the very top uh it's another thing that you really can't hear but it really does make a difference on your mix and then there's a few more eqs that i put on and this can be specific to any track it doesn't really apply to everything but you know when you're listening to your track you want to look out for those really harsh frequencies and just cut them out so for this track there's just a few right here at 1200, 2000, 2400, and 4000 that were really bothering me. So I just dipped those out a little bit just so they weren't so harsh and hurting your ears a little bit. Then there's a plugin called the, the Poltec that I really like. And what I do is just a little at 12,000 hertz, give it a little bit of a boost. Just, I never do more than three, like I think I've gone to four once, but it just, really gives your track a lot of brightness and it gives it that like radio clean sound and i highly recommend it i use it on a lot of different sounds in particular i use it on vocals i use it on some of my leads on guitar sounds it really just adds a lot of life to your track um and then after that we have a compressor and it's just you know kind of holding things together making sure there's not really any heavy peaks it's not heavy compressing at all i have the gain reduction go at a maximum of you know um three three gr nothing more than that just to make sure it's leveling everything off a little bit and then i have a limiter the threshold's at eight and i just make sure that with the gain reduction it's not going above five decibels of gain reduction that way if it goes any more than that then you're just going to be dealing with a lot of distortion and cracking and we don't want any of that and then at the very end, my little trick to give it a little bit of extra power and RMS is I use this T-Rex and it's awesome. I just go to the clip setting right here and just give a little one decibel of gain and it adds so much more power to the track without causing any distortion. Highly recommended. And then one more thing at the very end is I just have a little utility that I will automate on the master at the very end to just make the breaks a little bit quieter than the drops and I'll bring it down right up into the drop so that way right when the drop comes in it comes in a few decibels louder and just like it hits that much harder but that's it for the track I really hope all these tips and tricks helped you guys hope you guys enjoy the track talk to you later